Today on Warp Green Studios, we're going to paint up some Black Legion. Hi, I'm Amy and welcome to Warp Green Studios where chaos reigns. Black and gold are some tricky colours to paint. When I painted up the Blackstone Fortress Chaos Space Marines as Black Legion, I didn't really enjoy the process and I wasn't really happy with the results. When the Chaos Space Marine range refresh in 2019 came out, um, I was really excited. As big a Chaos fan as I am, there was nowhere I could not get them. But painting them as Black Legion was low down on my list. So what changed my mind? Well, of course, it was the big guy, Abaddon the Despoiler. At the time, I didn't buy any straight away because I had demons and Death Guard to paint up. But that whole time, I could feel old Abby staring at me, just begging to be painted. That model is just so cool. Like, I love the way you build him up in his undersuit and then you glue on all the Terminator plates afterwards. You can actually see the workings of Terminator armour. After painting him up, I decided that maybe painting Black Legion was a challenge that I wanted to push myself to learn. Fast forward a year and I have my own custom warband called the Scions of the Opened Eye. Their backstory is that they formed out of the remnants of multiple warbands that were decimated during the fall of Cadia. They now travel the galaxy, heralding the breaking of real space and the formation of the Great Rift as a glorious new age for humanity. So the first and most obvious hurdle I came across when painting Black Legion was the Black Power Armour. Um, I was very heavily influenced by Darren Latham's fantastic video on painting Black Power Armour. Um, I definitely recommend you watch it if you haven't already. But I made a lot of adjustments to it over the course of painting this army and I'd really like to share with you what I ended up with. So here we have a Black Legion aspiring champion from the Havoc kit. As you can see there's a ton of detail on these models which makes them very pretty but can also make them look kind of busy so we have to keep that in mind while painting. I've already primed him in black. Here I've got his backpack, I just drilled a hole in the back, glued a piece of wire in, bent it and stuck the other end in a cork, just to make it a bit easier to hold. First I'm going to come in with some Abyssal Blue by Scale 75 and I'm going to sketch in some thick edge highlights going all the way around the edges of the armour plates. I also want the panels to have a reflective sheen on them, so I'm going to paint vertical lines down some of the limbs and plates and some spots on circular panels where I think light will be reflecting. Now with this dark colour you don't have to be too neat as you'll barely be able to see it later, but it acts as both a guide and a foundation to build our highlights on top of. If you don't have Abyssal Blue, you can replace this with Incubi Darkness from GW or any very dark blue-green. Next I take some Caspian Blue and I do a much neater edge highlight. Take your time, stay inside the darker lines you just painted and try and keep those lines as neat and even as possible. If you're using GW paints, try Thunderhawk Blue for this stage. Finally we're going to take some Arctic Blue and we're going to brighten up those edge highlights where we think light might be catching. This should be focused on corners where lines intersect and prominent parts of the mini where you want to draw attention. The GW equivalent to this paint is Blue Horror. Having done our highlights, we're going to take some Athematic Blue and Contrast Medium and tie all this together. Just glaze over the entire thing, not letting any pools form. Okay, so that's the black power armor done. And 
The next thing that was bothering me about the minis I painted for Blackstone Fortress was the details. I'd originally gone with black guns, the grey cables, just a lot of muted colours that the heavy metal team had managed to look absolutely fantastic. But for me, they weren't really inspiring me that much. So as usual, I when I'm looking for inspiration, I went back to second edition 40k, of course. Um, I'm a big fan of the old Black Legion with the bright yellow cables, although I wasn't too keen on the steel trim they had back then. Stepping outside of just Black Legion, I also love a lot of the older schemes that have bright red gun casings, uh, yellow flamer nozzles, uh, flame patterns on things, so I thought I'd give that a go. So let's base all the red parts with Mephiston Red. This includes the hair, the handle of the mace, the gun, or any parts you want red. Next I'm going to base the parts that are going to be brown in Mournfang Brown, which is fairly much just the belt and the straps for his top knot on this model, but other Chaos Marines will have lots of pouches and straps to paint. I'm also going to use this to base the areas that are going to be yellow, such as the cables and the gun barrel, because GW yellow colours don't have great coverage, so if you put down a layer of brown first, you're going to spend a lot less time faffing about layering up the yellow to get a solid coat. Now I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade to wash all the parts that are red and brown. I'm not going to be doing this on the parts that are going to be yellow. I'm going to highlight that brown with some Baylor brown. I'm also going to make some little scratches in it to add texture to the belt. I'm then going to come in with some Screaming Skull and just emphasize those highlights and add a few more very fine scratches. And now the yellow. First of all, I'm going to take some Avalan Sunset and cover over all of the brown. Some of the ridge tubes look good if you leave the brown showing in the recesses. Having got a solid coat of Avalan Sunset, I layer up some Flash Gits yellow. You don't need to cover up all of the Avalan Sunset, leave a little bit of it showing underneath. Now I take some thinned down black paint and I paint in some hazard stripes along the cables. While I have the black out, I'm also going to do the freehand on the flamer's nozzle. I'm just going to paint some little flame patterns along it. And don't worry if they're not too neat, you can just come back in to tidy them up with the yellow. And keep going back and forth between the two till you've got something you're happy with. It took me three or four goes to get these perfect, so don't worry if they look messy at first. After that, I give all the yellow an edge highlight with some Screaming Skull. That's the yellow done with, and I think you can have a lot of fun really playing around with simple freehand like that on things like missile launchers and flamers. Next, we're going to...
Huh, that was weird. Anyway, next we're going to finish the red. Um, I want to do two different colours of red on this. A bright red for the gun casings and a more natural one for the hair. We're going to start these both the same way, but then we're going to alter the final highlights to make them look a bit different. First off, I'm going to go back to my fist and red and tidy up all of the red parts, leaving the darker patches in the recesses. I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of Mephist and Red and Incubi Darkness and I'm just going to glaze this onto some of the lower edges of panels just to add a bit of depth to them. I'm also going to do this to the hair by picking some patches to darken down. For highlighting hair, it really helps if you take a look at shampoo commercials and hair dye boxes. You'll see how hair has shiny patches that catch more light, and that's what we're really trying to emulate here. Now I'm going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and highlight all of the red. On the hair, I want to be focusing on building up some highlights in those key areas, but also picking out the strands along the length of the hair. Now I'm just going to focus on the cables and the gun for a minute. I want these to be a vibrant red, so I'm going to start by edge highlighting them with Troll Slayer Orange. Then I come in with some Fire Dragon Bright for a final highlight. So that's the gun and the cables done. But I want the hair on the handle of the mace to be a much more natural looking red. So I'm going to mix Evil Sun Scarlet with some Cadian Flesh Tone and highlight them up. Again, on the hair, I'm going to be focusing on these two patches that are going to be catching the most light while still picking out some of the individual strands. Then I come in with some pure Cadian Flesh Tone and I work on reinforcing those a bit further. Take some Kislev Flesh and repeat the process again. You only need to be covering a fairly small amount of the hair by now, just focusing on those extreme highlights. Finally, I come in with some Screaming Skull and just dot a few tiny spots where I think the most light is going to be reflecting. To tie all of the highlights on the hair together, I'm going to take a 50-50 mix of Volopus Pink and Contrast Medium and just glaze it all over. So we have all our bright primary colours done up. We just have a few more details to work on before we can get on to our metals. For the black rubber undersuit, visible through the gaps in the armour, I'm just going to come in with some Mechanica Standard Grey and highlight them. Then I give them a smaller highlight of Administratum Grey. Next I base coat the head in Rakarth Flesh. I wash the skin with Droopchi Violet. I run Numb Oil all over the undersuit just to add an extra bit of definition to it. Before the Droopchi Violet dries completely, 
I go back to the face and drop a bit of Reichland Flesh Shade just around the facial features. Let this blend naturally with the purple wash, but make sure it's not pooling. Then come back to rack off Flesh and pick out some of the key features on the face. Next, I use some Pallid Witch Flesh for the most prominent parts like the nose and the brows. I want to add some unpleasant looking blotchiness to the back of his head, so I take a 50-50 mix of Mephiston Red and Incubi Darkness and just spot it on the back of his skull, just where that lovely purple wash is deposited. I black out the eye sockets and mouth by dropping in a little very thin black paint. While I have the thin black out, I black line a few recesses where there isn't quite enough separation, such as where the head meets the suit. Don't go crazy and do this in every crevice on the face, but it can really help to define your volumes if done right. Then I give it a quick matte coat before I go on to paint the metals. And now we can finally get on to the other defining feature of Black Legion, which is the gold trim. Um, after a bit of experimentation, I came up with Necrotic Gold by Scale 75 as a base. I think that the closest GW equivalent is probably Liberator Gold, although that's a little bit lighter. Um, Scale 75 do some fantastic metallic colours though, so if you can check them out, I definitely recommend you do. I come in with my necrotic gold and I paint all of the trim. At this point, I also base the steel parts, such as the head of the mace, with black metal. I then base all the little teeth in the trim of the armour with sandry dust. Now I could have done this earlier, but there's a risk of going over them with the gold, so I like to leave them till afterwards. Then I take some elven gold and I start roughly sketching in some highlights on that gold. Now, I wash all of the gold with Agrax Earthshade. After this, I do a slightly more selective shade with 50-50 Agrax Earthshade and Wildwood Contrast Paint. This just adds a bit more depth to the model by building up the shadows. I wash all the steel with a mixture of Null Oil and Black Templar Contrast Paint. Then I'm going to highlight all of the teeth with Screaming Skull. I also use this to pick out the teeth of the actual Marine. Next, I'm going to take some Corax White and draw in the eye. I'm trying to keep to the middle of the black I painted in earlier. When that's done, I go back to the black and dot in the pupil. While I have the Corax white out, I'm also going to base coat this orb on the backpack because I want to give it a glowing effect, like it's heated by otherworldly energy. Now I take a 50-50 mix of Elven Gold and Heavy Metal and I'm going to highlight all of the gold. If you go straight for a bright silver highlight on the gold, it can reflect too much light off all those trim edges and look distracting to the eye, so I like to keep it more muted with this.
Now I do take the pure heavy metal and I'm just going to hit some of the corners of the gold and highlight up the steel parts. Finally, I take some Fluor Red from Green Stuff World and I'm just going to glaze it over the orb on the back for a quick superheated look. Sometimes I might add in more colours to get something like this looking a bit more realistic, but I feel this works nicely by itself. I just dab off some of the red towards the centre of the orb to tidy it up. Okay, so that's my Black Legion scheme for the Scions of the Opened Eye. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial as always. And if you have any colour schemes or techniques for painting Black Legion, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you're in the UK, don't forget I've got an Element Games affiliate link down in the description where you can save money on your hobby goodies and support the channel at the same time. Thanks for watching, see you soon.